Morning, everybody. Delighted to be here. Um, I love Hong Kong and I love Calvinese. Sorry. <laughs> Just make my opening statement and get myself clear. Um, but I'm, also, um, I'm a dreamer. I love Hong Kong, as I've just said. Um, but I'm also realistic. Um, and I think part of today, for me anyway, is to bring a bit of reality to the situation. Um, uh, if you like, undertake a bit of reality check. So what I've done for the purpose of this presentation, so we don't duplicate, because we could cover the same ground many times over if we're not careful, um, I've done a bit of stock take um, as to where we are in terms of connectivity. Um, I've then come up with a number of suggestions as to how we might enhance the, the connectivity offer, as I describe it, and then um, move on, if you like, to my favorite theme, which is the need to set up a hub front authority to deliver the connectivity and the experiences we're talking about today. So that, that's the agenda, if you like, um, and I'll move straight into the briefing. Um, just acknowledgments, first of all. Um, we've had a group here from Worcester Polytechnic Institute who literally walked the whole of the waterfront uh, to establish what is connected and what isn't. Um, and they've been guided and steered by the Harbourfront Business Forum, Designing Hong Kong, and the Commission has also had some involvement. So acknowledgements before we uh, move into the detailed presentation. And I'm sure Paul, who Witz and Moon, who also been involved, will have some comments to make on, the, on this particular study. Um, Vincent touched on this, but Getting people to the water and along the water has been a cornerstone of uh, the, uh, my aspirations and the aspirations of the, of the Commission and its predecessors from the outset. Um, when I sat on the town planning board with Bone Leung, um, we discussed then about the vision for the harbour and the whole eth ethos, if you like, the, whole dri the main driver was this whole issue of getting people to the water and along the water. So connectivity has been with us now for 15 years. Um, Firstly at the Town Planning Board, then at the Harbour Enhancement Committee, and now at the uh, Harbour Front Commission. And as you see, I believe it will also be a driver if, uh, as and when we get the new Harbour Front Authority established. Um, but, and this is the reality side of things, we, we've got a lot to do. I mean, this may be a little pessimistic in that terms of that statement, but we have an awful lot to do in terms of uh, um, enhancing the con connectivity and ensuring that people can get to the water and along the water. Um, just to remind people of the extent of the challenge, um, this is the, the uh, 70 kilometers that's been referred to um, earlier today. The responsibility of the commission runs, and the authority would run from um, Kennedy Town right through to Shockey Wan, and then in terms of the north of the harbor, runs right from Lei Moon right through to Qingyi, and actually includes the container terminal, uh, which obviously from a connectivity point of view is a challenge in itself. Um, need to remember also, this is a working harbor, um, and um, we have to, certainly so far as the western end of the harbor is concerned, we have to respect that it is the source of employment uh, for many thousands of people in Hong Kong, and we have to t uh, tread and touch gently, if you like, in terms of that particular area of the harbor. Um, we have our challenges, um, we have our connectivity, but then suddenly we don't have our connectivity. Um, this is uh, North Point, um, this is uh, Central, Wancha, uh, Cent uh, Central District, um, and this is Shockey Wan. And it's not unusual to be walking on the waterfront and then find, for one reason or another, you can't move um, on and you can't even get round. Um, so th these are some of the existing challenges, if you like. Um, we need to address. Um, but if I may, um, this is the exception. Obviously, energizing Calanese is a holistic approach to planning. But generally speaking, and Vincent touched upon this, hitherto we've adopted somewhat of a, what I describe as a jigsaw approach. Um, and really, if we're going to achieve what, I'm what we, we've been des describing this morning as um, a holistic solution uh, to connect connectivity, then we really need to look at things in the round um, and we certainly need a master concept, a master plan against which to plan. Um, but I think one of the major constraints is, is funding. Um, and I'll say this even with government here. Um, the reason we go for temporary uh, solutions, uh, quick wins, temporary solutions, is to avoid the capital works program and ap application system. 
which can in Hong Kong take up to five years to get in the queue, to get accepted, and then to get before LegCo. Um, and not surprisingly, uh, the government uh, team uh, try and maneuver as best they can within, within those rules. If it's a very major scheme, they may, they may start the application process. But there's a ceiling of 21 million, and everything that you've seen, and we'll see if you like, in terms of temporary works, just comes under the 21 million. Um, and, and this is how we manage to, in, the terms of a, in terms of a patchwork quilt, if you like, build up um, a series of uh, connections around the waterfront. Um, and as a result of this, this financial constraint, um, we get um, temporary solutions and we get quick wins. Fine in a way, but wouldn't it be much better if we were, came up with a master connectivity plan Costed it, took it to government, took it to, uh, to, to government, took it to the LegCo, and, and worked on the basis of a master concept, uh, rather than hand to mouth as we do now. Um, this is what the outcome of the 21 million uh, dollar type solution, um, a reasonable temporary solution, but certainly if you know, we're thinking of Hong Kong and wanting to create a harbour front that really is going to uh, excite, be vibrant, and uh, uh, represent a real statement, then this is, this is somewhat indifferent in terms of a permanent solution. Um, quick wins, Vincent mentioned this. I think credit to government and credit to the administration for the quick win solutions within the 21 million, but it is a piecemeal approach and uh, it's not obviously where we want to he head in the longer term. Um, other quick win projects which come within the 21, this is converting a, a, a um, a drainage facility, um, uh, it, it, uh, landscaping it and providing public access to it. So things can be done within the, within the financial constraints I've mentioned, but it, it is a major, major issue which we have to think about and uh, have to address going forward. Um, one of the, I think the most successful quick win projects is what we see outside. Um, a very interesting, projects like this need a champion. I'm sure you all know that this was one of Mrs. Carrie Lamb's projects. Um, she drove this, she pushed it through. Without that sort of champion within the administration, even the quick win projects um, uh, find difficulty um, in gaining any, any uh, acceptability. Um, technical impediments we have to recognize. Um, first of all, we have roads running around the waterfront and close to the harbor. Um, and they, they themselves um, represent a physical constraint in terms of accessibility and connectivity. Structures, I think Vincent touched upon this, but clearly over time sites have been sold along the waterfront um, and in private ownership. So at some stage negotiation has to be held with those parties to see if it's possible to find a way through those properties or at least around them. We have seven typhoon shelters in the, uh, the harbour um, which are um, a challenge to connectivity. We have sewage works, ferry piers, public cargo working areas. We have the Island Eastern Corridor, which I'll touch upon, where we're looking at hanging a boardwalk underneath the corridor. And then we have fish and wholesale markets. Um, if you like, a legacy of the past and something which I think we could address in that they um, are no longer, in many cases, they're no longer used for purpose, but th they're not serviced in the way that they were. Pri previously, they were serviced from the, from the water. Now they're serviced from the land. Um, and there's a case for obviously moving them, relocating them over time, and using those areas for other purposes, particularly public enjoyment. Um, I think we have to accept that there are certain uses which will have to be on the waterfront, um, particularly uh, thinking of fire, fire services, thinking of uh, police services. Um, the, unfortunately, we have this issue with helicopter pads. Um, they have, helicopters have to come in over the water, um, so they will always be, if you like, a, a nuisance or a, a challenge that we have to live with. Um, but I think we should systematically look at around the waterfront at all the different uses and have a master plan of relocation, if you like, uh, for those that are not essential and those that not, don't essentially have to be on the waterfront. Um, this is the status of current access. Um, the, the green is where there is access uh, uh, already. Um, but the, this, uh, let me just convert this into figures because I think it's much more meaningful if we look at Look at it in uh, terms of kilometers. Um, 73 kilometers, I mentioned, is the total challenge. 
Um, to date, 27 kilometers is uh, legally accessible um, by pedestrians, but we've only added uh, 2.7 kilometers uh, over the last few years. That's the Hung Hom and the uh, Corrie Bay uh, temporary um, waterfronts. Um, the encouraging thing is that 19 kilometers um, shown on uh, development plans, uh, which are in the process of being uh, taken forward within the administration. Um, 2.8 uh, of that will become accessible by 2021. So there is a progression, if you like, but that still leaves 47 kilometers, uh, which are not accessible even after 2021. Um, and that requires a program, if you like, of um, uh, review, if you like. Certain areas, I mean, I think we have to accept areas around the container terminal are going to be very challenging in terms of public access. Um, so there will always be a residue, if you like, of uh, kilometers which uh, aren't accessible. But we need to do a lot better, obviously, than where we are today. Um, and this is what I think we'd like to see. Chingy is a very accessible, very, I think, successful waterfront. Um, so is Shampu Po, uh, Taiko Chui. Um, they, they've got a good balance, if you like, um, between um, uh, the physical aspects and the, uh, the soft side of things. A um, whole series of solutions. So that's the, where we are, if you like. This is where I think we, where we can make immediate improvements, if you like, um, uh, in terms of uh, improving accessibility. I think we want a whole series of negotiations with existing developers and, de and, and developments um, to see if we can persuade them. A lot of them have created waterfront um, uh, benefits, if you like, for, for the residents of those developments, but they're private, they're, they're fenced off, and they're private from a public point of view. I think negotiation with the big, big, um, the big property owners, I think there's a potential to make them feel guilty, if you like, or to make them feel that they, they should do something. Um, and maybe, you know, it's, it's part-time. We talked about experiments earlier. Maybe it's on an experimental basis. But we, we seek to, wherever we can, free up um, public access. Um, acceptance that where we can't, uh, where there's an existing obstruction, if you like, we really need to plan and think closely about bypass routes going round, um, requires some, some, some careful planning. Um, one of the things that we're not very good at either, I think, is, is how, we sign, um, how we sign the, uh, the connectivity, if you like. Um, because uh, we've had set several goes at this, even at the Commission, and there, is, there are some, some signs up, but I think we need a real blitz, if you like, at creating um, a whole series of uh, um, uh, very clear signs, um, getting people to the water and along the water. Um, and I think, again, branding, there's an opportunity here, I think, to, to brand the harbour front um, so, um, with, with, with a, a, not only a logo, but a whole distinct uh, identity, if you like, which would give some uh, weight to the, the value of the harbour front. Um, other solutions... Um, that I think we need to look at. Um, where we have roads running um, alongside the harbour um, and where we're unlikely to be able to create a promenade access, then I think we should um, create, deliberately create walkways alongside those roads um, and the appropriate amenities, including lighting, um, so that, the, again, it's a very clear uh, um, uh, delineation, if you like. It feels like a continuation of the waterfront. Um, we need, to, I think, to look. Uh, we're doing this in terms of uh, the new, new schemes along the um, uh, Causeway Bay waterfront, and we're looking at a, a, um, a boardwalk underneath the island and corridor. But wherever possible, um, if, it's, if there's a narrowness, or even if there is a, a moment doesn't appear to be uh, access along the water, look at boardwalks. Uh, Cantilevered, if you like, out over the sea wall. Out, out over the sea wall. Um, I think possible, certainly engineering-wise, um, and it, it's an alternative, if you like, to saying 
there's no, there's no way we can solve the problem. Um, signage I've talked about. Um, detours, uh, we need sign, uh, detour signs as well, I think. Um, very often the works are going, along, going on along the waterfront and we need to address that as well. Um, detours um, are key, I think, to uh, sign, sign detours are key to allowing pedestrians continuous access um, along and between existing promenades. Um, clearly branded signage I mentioned already. Um, and I think if we brand, uh, were to brand the uh, Victoria Harbour front, waterfront very clearly, I think that would be, uh, that would be helpful. Um, produce the production of some maps which show the, the promenades and, and the access points to the waterfront is something that we, we should and uh, have not yet addressed. Um, I think also a central register um, of permanent road detours and temporary changes because at certainly this stage in time there are all kinds of works going along, uh, along the waterfront and I think a central register would be, would be very helpful. Um, one of the things that I've challenged government to do also is, is to open up waterfront areas which are at the moment, if you like, lying idle pending, uh, pending uh, other works. Um, Charcoal Ling is an example where there's a huge area of waterfront there um, which is just lying idle, yet there are people using it, um, there are people fishing there, people jogging there, um, people walking dogs, etc. So why not do it in a more official way, if you like, um, and open the gates rather than having people jump over the gates um, and allow people on a temporary basis um, to, to, to use those areas. I know the government is cautious because they feel that people will develop a sense of ownership, if you like, and not be want, willing to give them back, but I still think it's worth trying. Um, sharing um, is another area we need, to, we need to discuss as a community. Um, most successful uh, waterfronts um, are, are sh around the world are shared. The use is shared. You have bikes, you have dogs, um, you have running, exercise, etc. Um, and people in Hong Kong, quite frankly, have become somewhat selfish. Um, and this is an issue because when we talk to district councils about opening up their um, waterfronts to everybody, in principle they agree it's a good idea, but when you suggest it might be their waterfront, they think, find all kinds of reasons why um, it shouldn't or couldn't be done. Um, so I think what we're going to have to do is trial, again back to experiments, one or two district councils are more progressive, so with, we, I think with them we, could, we can trial um, having community access, if you like, to the waterfront. Um, I think that's, uh, that's essential. And then preparation of a long-term master harbourfront continuity plan. Um, I think you need context. Uh, you're looking at all these pieces of the jigsaw, but you do need context in, uh, in terms of taking things forward. Um, ultimate solution. Let, let me just make a bit of a pitch, if I may, uh, for, for the uh, Harbourfront Authority. Um, there's an unequivocal need for a, holi a holistic approach. Everybody agrees. We've heard it mentioned uh, today, and certainly when we talk to community, that they agree. Um, and it's a holistic approach in terms of land and water. We've heard about the importance of water access as well as land access this today. Um, one of the things that I would like to create in the harbour is a, a raft of water taxi um, systems, if you like. Um, hop on, hop off. Not too big, as we've heard earlier. Um, we've had... Um, a couple of approaches um, from people who have seen what's happened in New York or Sydney, looking to perhaps do a, um, a commute service along the north shore of Hong Kong Island, um, looking to uh, run from uh, Taiku through to North Point, through to Causeway Bay, Wan Chai, and then to Central, and then on to Kennedy Town. Uh, 50 people type vessels, 100 people perhaps at um, uh, major... Um, commute times. Um, we need, I think we've heard about LCSD type parks. Um, it's, a, it's, part, it's a function of the, the system, if you like, but we need to move away from that. And that then leads into the, the need for the Harbour Front Authority. Um, we need a, a body, an agency, which is empowered to, to deal with uh, the, the way forward, um, has executive powers, the Commission at the moment only has advisory powers. 
So um, I think there's a strong case for having this authority. We've been to the community twice. The community has agreed that uh, um, there, is, there is a case and are very supportive. It's now with government and I'm going to be asking people like yourselves for support because my sense is that government's peddling slowly, peddling slowly. I don't know what the problem is, um, but the community are behind the idea, um, the, the commission is behind the idea. We've come up with the matrix, the way forward. Um, we come up with uh, a transparent process, etc. So we've, I think we've ticked all the boxes, if you like, in terms of how it can be achieved. But government at the moment is, 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 is treading slowly. Um, and there's general acceptance, as I say, by the community that this is the right way forward. And this is my last slide. Um, uh, what does worry me is this overcautious approach by the administration to moving matters forward. The report and the recommendations were submitted at the end of last year, so we're to nearly six months now. Uh, I think it's essential to maintain the momentum. Um, but just to reassure you, in the meantime, the, the Commission will uh, keep up the momentum, will maintain its role, reviewing schemes, uh, and, and hopefully um, continue to achieve what we've achieved to date, which I think is a, is a fairly dynamic waterfront. Just to give you an idea, um, so far in six years, the Commission has looked at over 100 schemes. Um, many have been sent away, and we've asked them to do better, and they've come back and have done better. But the weakness in the system is that the Commission at the moment is only advisory, and we really think we need a body with executive powers. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.